Ray. Riff, riff, wrong. Okay. Risk Progress is a part of Christian Reek Central Network. And Christian Reek Central Rock Wrong. Hey, Scoop, what are you doing, man? I don't know. I'm supposed to be reading an ad. All right, hold on. Give me, give me it. Okay. <laughs> All right. This podcast is part of the Christian Geek Central Network at ChristianGeekCentral.com. Cartoons, the animated frontier. These are the voyages of the Cellcast podcast. It's continuing mission to explore strange new cartoons, to seek out new animation styles and new creative storytelling methods, to boldly go where so few ever go again. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cellcast. The animated series. Joining me today is a man who uh, may not be what he seems. Mm. Jacob. Well, I do have my evil intentions at all. <laughs> Why, thank you. And I'd like to introduce our co-host. A man who just had to let those stinking lizards in. <laughs> welcome, Drew. Well... You do what you have to do. Traitor. I guess. I guess. <laughs> How are you doing, Jacob? I am doing well, minus... Obviously, you can hear having a cold is not fun, but overall, pretty good. Welcome to November. Yeah, exactly. So today, we are reviewing Thundercats Season 1, Episode 2, Omens Part 2. Why don't you tell us a little about that? All right, so... Our episode, our episode Part 2, obviously, because it's... Go back and listen to Part 1. Uh... Thundera is attacked by a horde of lizards betrayed by one of their kind. Their king their king is killed and their empire is left in ruins. Thundera's empire. Thundera's empire. Okay. Yes. Just make verifying. Yes. And so now we have our adventurers. Nah. Now, the only Thundercats left have to discover where the Book of Omens lie. And our story begins. Alrighty. So, let's talk about this thing. Alright. So, originally it was aired on July 29th, 2011. It was directed by, if you can read those, it'd be great. Yasuhiro Geshi, Roko Ogiharu, and Sean Song. Thank you. Alright, so going into a little bit of trivia about this episode. This episode is the debut, well, a full debut, because we actually saw a glimmer. Our antagonist, Mumra, the ever-living, we get his full debut... And we almost see him transform into his his full Mumra the Ever Living, but is stopped because of his into- his intolerance to sunlight. Okay. All right. This is also the first episode we meet Sly, which is the general of the Lizard Army. The thing that kind of looks like a horny toad. Yeah, pretty much. All That's right. Sly. All right, we're also we also see, but it's not mentioned. We meet. Uh, do you remember the the cat that can smell can smell the lizards coming on top of that that uh, watchtower? I kind of do. All right, I smell lizards, and many of them sound the alarm. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, that's Linkso from the original series. Okay. Even though he's his name is not mentioned, it's a good throwback to I believe it was. Season three or season two of Thundercats? Don't look at me. <laughs> All right. So also in trivia, apparently now granted be like, I haven't watched all of the original Thundercats. I remember a lot of it, but I have not watched all of it. But according to information I've gathered, there is when 
the missile takes out the the top of the head of the uh, the Thundercat lair. Uh huh. That is almost a callback to an episode where a large robot took the head off of Cat Slayer in the original series. Oh, I believe okay. it was season two, and we get uh, King Claudius or Emperor Claud. Is it Emperor or King Claus? I think it's King Claudius. Yeah, King Claudius. King Claudius saying the once again voiced by the original Lionel. Yes. By Larry Kinney says Thundercats ho and my little Thundercat kid went I just went nuts. I was like, mm-hmm. Yes, oh my gosh. And then you get a little bit of trivia and a little bit of more insight to Mamara believes that or he claims that the stone in the hilt of that sword belongs to me. So we will get into that a little bit more later on in the series. Right. Um, and then we get this, our, our new lion played by Will Freely. We get him saying the full thunder, thunder, thundercats, ho, mm-hmm. and using it on Mumra, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, and other, I think that's about it on trivia. So... What did you think about the episode, Drew? I thought this was a nice kickoff to uh, the rest of the story. It sets, it definitely finishes setting the scene that part one mm-hmm. uh, started. Uh, I do think that Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat seem like they're kind of extra characters in this episode, much mm-hmm. like they were in the first one, because oh, yeah. they don't really join really until episode three. Mm-hmm. But uh, this was a great. This is you can definitely tell this is like this and the first one were supposed to be aired together. Yes, the the way it's uh, edited, this feels this feels like uh, if you didn't watch the first half, you you're gonna miss out a lot because we're not gonna explain too terribly much. We're just gonna jump right into it. Mm-hmm. It's well, like I said, it's the second half of a story. Uh, and it's just a fun. It does not, of course, it doesn't have a happy ending because it's not supposed to have a happy no. ending. It is here's how everything's going to pot and why our heroes are going to have to rise up and go after Mumra to defeat him. Mm-hmm. And it's a nice way of setting that up. It's a great start to a series, and you do still get a couple of great uh, little. Uh, moments in oh, there, yeah, even though they ultimately lose the battle. And of course, the only reason they, I say, I say they lose, technically they run, they, they win because they knocked, uh, they kept Mumra busy until the sun uh, forced him to go back into hiding. Yeah. But at the same time, they lost pretty bad. They did. On this one. So it, I don't, it, it's one of those, you know, they won, but they lost yeah. sort of a thing. So they had a small victory, very, very it, small. That's what you call a Pyrrhic victory. Yeah. Um, and so it was nice to see, you know, not everything was as clear cut as maybe they would have hoped. Yeah. It wasn't a clear victory, unfortunately, but still it was a great, it was a great way to start out the series and to introduce you to all the remaining characters with the exception of one who we'll get to later. Yeah. Um, points that I wanted to bring up. Let's see, uh, one of the lines that I really loved that uh, Lionel says, how did my dreams become a, become my nightmare? <laughs> of the fact be like, Lionel was obsessed with old technology. Right. And, and now he's seeing that, oh, this technology that I didn't know what it was is now being used against um, my home and everything. It's like, and so he's the only one who really understands what's going on. Yeah. Because everyone else is like, oh my gosh, because he was the only one who understood or slightly understood his obsession with technology that came to turn the battle around a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then Mumra showed up. <laughs> well, and it was also his kindness yeah. earlier mm-hmm. that actually helped them because yes. uh, the two, the guard that is watching his cell is Which, one of the lizard men that uh, 
they had he let loose yes. back in part one. Mm-hmm. So that came back to help them. Yes, in many I ways. agree. Agreed. So if Lionel had not been who he was, we would not have gotten uh, this. This battle would not have gone as well as it did. Mm-hmm. I agree. Even though it didn't go too terribly well at all, no, it, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, the Thundercats could have been wiped out completely. Oh yeah, not that that would have made a good show. Yeah, but but you have remnants re- that remain to right. continue the fight. Um, let's talk about uh, Mumra's reveal. Mumra's reveal: the fact that we have Groon betrays the Thundercats, betray- betrays his own species mm-hmm. for a more significant power, as Groon would say. And we get the reveal that Panthro wasn't dead, allegedly. We don't. He, he's dead as far as we know right now. Right. But as be like, we see that Panthro is a captive, and so Claudius has to save his friend. But ultimately, Panthro and air quotes, yes, stabs Claudius in the back because it's not Panthro. Oh. And to, and to, it's and, Mumra. Yeah, exactly. To uh, the quote, to another quote, which I loved. Have you ever considered that if technology is real, that so are the things of your of your worst nightmares in his transformation into Mumra? Yes. Which was like ah, this is so be like the the uh, the writing in this episode is spot on, so good. I I liked it. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely being the Thundercat kid, I am. There's there's another line which I absolutely love. This is the scene where um Lino and Tigra have broken out of the cell. Mm-hmm. They met up with Chitara. And so now they're in the throne room where Mumra is torturing Jaga for information where the sort the sort the um uh, how to unlock how to what was it? Break the spell, break the uh, enchantment over the Sword of Omens? I think so. Yeah. So, in the midst of that, Lion O is able to grab the sword and it says this line, which I thought it was perfect. You may have taken my father's life, but you won't take his sword, in which he shouts the very classic Thunder, mm-hmm. Thunder, Thundercats, ho. And I was just like, yes, again, very much so. Um, we get a better use of, or a better animation of that in, I think, episode four, I believe. Yes. But, or a, full, a much fuller animation of that. But we get to see the uh, the uh, stock footage in its entirety in yes, episode four. Yes, exactly. And I call it the stock footage. Yeah. Not as, a, not as something that's uh, not, not as bad. I'm not oh, trying yeah. to be, bad, be mean about it. Mm-hmm. It's just every one of these shows, especially from our childhood, has that moment that was filmed, that was created one time, and they just and reused it. over and over again. And it's usually some of the most epic points in it that you're just waiting to happen. Oh yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't don't look at that. That is me talking down about that moment because yeah. that's just a very good moment. It's just the, yeah, the stock footage is not really good until <laughs> episode four. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's there was one there's. And behind the scenes, they're talking with the actors. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy, the the actor who played Panthro, which I can't remember his name, but I'll bring him up in a it's moment. the uh, same guy who would go on to play Gontu in uh, Lilo and Stitch. Mm, you're right. I believe. I believe it's the same guy. One of those guys is, ends up being Gontu. Kevin Michael Richardson. Kevin Michael Richardson. Thank you. So there's a scene where Mevin, Kevin Michael Richardson and come on, think the guy who voiced Lion O. Will Friedel. Will Friedel. Him and we Will Friedel. They're doing an interview, and so they come up to the scene where Mike uh, Richardson's like. He's about to say. He's about to say it. He's he's rocking his wheel back and forth. But say it, say it, say it. <laughs> and I thought it was the most 
where it's the thing because Will Wayne's this little guy, and then he reaches mm-hmm. like this huge guy. And it was like, yep, you definitely fit for Panthro. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode for what it was. It has a very good story, a lot of really good payoffs from the first episode. And it starts our journey to finding the Book of Moments. Mm-hmm. We have a little more understanding of the world. We, we have a lot more world building going on here. And I'm actually excited to get into a little more of what's really going on. Because I remember watching most of the series when it originally came out. And I'm really looking forward to re-watching a lot of this and understanding it more and Really sad we never got a season two. Right. And yeah, let's just see where this journey goes. All righty. Well, join us next time for the episode of... (laughs) I just watched it. It's like gun... Well, it's Moby Dick is what it is. Yeah, it is Moby Dick. (laughs) It's Moby Dick. It's Moby Dick is what it is, but Mm -hmm. I can't remember what this actually calls it. Uh... Join us next time for Ramlack Rising. Come, Jacob. We must prepare for next week. Prepare for what, Drew? Same thing we do every week, Jacob. Record a podcast! Oh, boy! So where can they find you, Jacob? They can find me on Facebook at Jacob B. Heron and Jacob's Daily Art Corner, my personal art Facebook page. On Twitter at Jacob B. Heron. On Instagram at Jacob B. Heron. And on Letterbox at Jacob Heron. Where can they find you, Drew? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Drew Dodgen. You can also find my Facebook page at Drew's Photo Bin, where I upload uh, my photography. You can also follow me on Letterbox at GGeorge759 and Twitter at GGeorge759. Where can they find us, Jacob? You can also visit our website, the Cellcast podbean.com where you will find every episode we released and links to listen to it on apple Podcasts, google play and stitcher our rss feed if we aren't in your favorite podcast app directory please share review and subscribe to us there and share us with your friends you will also find a link to our facebook group the double feature podcast community where we talk about both animated and live-action movies. We share this with our other podcasts, which we do with Jacob's brother Jim, at uh, the Movie of the Week podcast, where we talk about live-action movies. You can also email us at thecellcastpodcast at gmail.com. Also, please like our page on Facebook. We try to post about upcoming movies. If you comment on that movie's post before we record, we'll read your comments in the episode. And remember, every time we say the Cellcast, that is with a single L 